Okay, I'm going to move on to the next part. Stop typing, look here, new concept. Uh, we did this reducing image collections, and since you've been hammered since the morning of composites, this one is still easy to understand. The next one is that you can reduce images. So forget about image collections, I have one image, and I want to compute some statistics of an image. So let's say an example of this, I have an image, I have some pixels, I have a polygon, and I want to compute the average value of pixels within that polygon. Like I want to do zonal statistics. I want to say I have a farm, I want to know the average NDVI within the farm. Okay, how do we do this? You can also run a reducer on an image, and it is done using this function called reduce region. There are many functions in Earth Engine which will ask you for a reducer. Now you know what reducers are. You can say, I want to take this image, and for this polygon, I want to compute some statistical average or statistical value. I'll run the function reduce region and use whatever appropriate reducer. Let's see this as an example in the code. Here, I have drawn a polygon over one farm. I have this polygon, this one farm. I've gotten the least cloud image for one year and just displayed that. So this is my farm. This is an NDVI image, or this is the actual image. So I have, let me print this. This is my 13 band image and this is my farm. So again, we're not doing collection, we are just having an image. I want to know there are so many pixels here inside of this. What is the average value of band one within this? What is the average value of band four within this region? So let's see how to do this. If you have an image, you can run this function called reduce region. Reduce region allows you to take, give a polygon and compute the stats. Autofill, control space, let's fill the parameters. It says what reducer you want to apply. You can pick a reducer, we'll say E reducer mean, I want the average value of the pixels within the polygon. Geometry, what's your region? This is our farm geometry. What scale you want to run this? 10 meter resolution. You can specify CRS if you want, other parameters not required. Do this. What you get is a dictionary, you get one value per band. What does it say? There's the value, average value of band one in this region is 2050. So there are so many pixels, we just computed the average of that. If I want the maximum value, what do I do? Change it to max, let's see. This is the max value of each band in the region. What if I want to know how many pixels are there in the region? I have this polygon. I want to know how many pixels are there. How do I count that? E reduce count? Yes, let's try that. We have 835 pixels at 10 meter resolution in this image. So again, when you specify the scale, Earth Engine will say, I don't care what the size of your original pixels are. It's gonna resample everything at 10 meter and then count the pixel. And you can see there are 800 pixels of each band in this region. What? Uh, the default value is, I believe, it will be the scale of the first band or one kilometer, it'll take the default value. Whatever is there. Uh, no, it won't do that. Because again, once you learn a little bit more about Earth Engine, uh, Earth Engine, when you're doing work in Earth Engine, there is no defined pixel size. Because when you create a composite, it's like a virtual image. There's no fixed pixel size. So again, Earth Engine has to always ask you, what pixel size do you want? And that's what will use that. So two different things. You have. Uh, collection, you can reduce it, you'll get an image. 
You have an image, you do reduce region, you'll get a dictionary with the, the output of that. Let's try the exercise. Almost there at the problem that we want to solve. Remember, we want to compute NDVI for any farm in the whole world. We want to know how the NDVI changes. I want you to now delete this geometry and draw a polygon over a farm. Find a farm anywhere in the world. If you have a large backyard, maybe draw a polygon over your backyard. Uh, NDVI makes sense for vegetation, so go and find a patch of vegetation that you want to understand the phenology of. Once you can delete the geometry, you can use the drawing tools. If it's a regular polygon, you can use this, or you can just use this tool to draw uh, irregular polygon. And then we want to compute the average NDVI within that farm. So we'll use the same code from our finished script. So you want to use this code and use the NDVI. So you draw a polygon over a farm. You can use the satellite imagery as the background. So you can turn on the satellite imagery, draw a polygon. And once you have it, you can compute the average value of the NDVI within that. So we already have this NDVI image in a polygon. You'll be able to then compute, take the NDVI image, run reduce region on that. So. Uh, please raise your hand if you need help either drawing the geometry or uh, writing this code for reduced region. It doesn't matter if you clip it, it's just for the, or it's not showing up as an image. Mm. Oh, it's clipped, that's why I said, so you have the geometry here. You can see, that's mm. the reason. it just was hiding behind the geometry.
Yeah, this mean is fine. Okay. So, and then okay. instead of image, you just do NDVI. So copy paste this code and run it on this NDVI image. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's fine. Now this. Actually, you can turn key B4. Uh, yeah, it just prints stats. Because when you compute this, your band is called NDVI. So your dictionary will have this NDVI here. So if you want to print this, you'll say get NDVI. So this ah. is the name of the band. Yes. All right, we're going to move on. In Earth Engine, everything is a reducer. Uh, if you are trying to implement your image processing workflow, it's likely that it's implemented as a reducer. So next time you're trying to do something in Earth Engine, you say, I don't know how to do this, look under the reducer section. If you want to run this kind of operation, moving window operation, these are called kernel operations. In remote sensing terminology, they are called filters. So if you want to apply a morphological filter, or if you want to use a high pass filter, they are implemented as reduced neighborhood, because what they are is essentially take a pixel, look at the neighborhood, give a statistical summary of that. So there's a function called reduce neighborhood you can run to do convolutions. If you want to do zonal statistics, I have a shape file of polygons. I want average NDVI for each polygons. We ran reduce region, right? You can so reduce regions, plural, which will give you, you can specify a feature collection. It will give you the average value of NDVI in each of those polygons. If you have just a vector data and you say I have a shape file, I have a column, I want some of that, you can do reduce column. Raster to vector, I have some raster, I want to polygonize that. That's called reduce to vectors. I have some shape file, convert to image, that's called reduce to image. I want to do linear regression, E li reduce a linear fit, E reduce a linear regression, right? So all of those kind of functions are implemented as reducers. So when you're trying to do something which you don't know how to do it, reducers will likely help you find that. How does something like reduce neighborhoods work with the parallel processing where it's cutting sections up? What happens if that neighborhood goes over the edge? Uh, I think uh, the, at the edge, it's going to, uh, what it does, it, if you are at the first pixel, top left pixel here, you do not have the edge pixels to compute there. So when you run your reduce neighborhood, you get an image with one pixel less. I think it, if you, it, just ignores that uh, region where there is some no data, so you'll get one pixel less in your output. Mm, okay. But I guess he was wondering too, like kind of like on the inside between two of them, where yeah. it might not. Like if the, if the parallel processing, when you say. When you're working with a big area, and so Earth Engine splits it into tithes, between those two tithes, does it? Do the ties end up overlapping? And yeah, I think the implementation would include uh, something like uh, kind of some overlap so that you have this tile effect. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly it's, uh, how it's implemented. Okay. All right, we are 
over time. Just a warning, if you need to go, please go. Uh, but I'm going to wrap up in next 15 minutes or so.